There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello booktube, I'm Sean the Bookmaniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with my Pride Month TBR. I'm aware that there is a, is it like three times a year, queer readathon organized by some lovely people and I have taken part in that in years past, but this year I'm just going rogue. I'm just gonna post a Pride TBR and I'm not affiliating myself with anything other than Pride. So, I'm gonna put details if I can find them about the queer readathon in my show notes, but this is, um, this is uh, Sean the Book Maniac going rogue in the queerest way possible. So, my goal is I have a couple buddy reads I'm going to tell you about. Plus, I would like to read two works of gay male fiction, two works of lesbian fiction, and two works of trans fiction. So that's six books. Plus, I have two buddy reads, and there's one other book that I'm going to throw in for good measure. So, let's get started. Since I read the absolutely phenomenal, life-changing novel, Detransition Baby, by Tori Peters, I, it has just sharpened my interest in reading more trans-lit. And so I have two here, and the first one is from the UK, We Are Made of Diamond Stuff, by Isabel Widener, a trans writer, and they are very, I don't know, POMO, cutting-age experimental fiction. I'm a little nervous about this one, but I'm going to try it. I bought both of them at the same time. Their other novel, novella, is Gaudy Bobble, and this one looks even scarier. Uh, I basically made my decision by looking at the way the layout was and the capital letters and the symbols, and I thought, oh, that's going to give me a headache. And this one... There's still lots of capital letters, but there's just something a little less intimidating about the layout, so I have them both. I'm going to start, uh, We Are Made of Diamond Stuff is the first one. It's described as an innovative and critically, and critically British novel, taking issue with the dream of national belonging set on the Isle of Wight. Widener is a writer and critical theorist, and I don't know that I've ever read a work of fiction by a critical theorist that was any good, so fingers crossed, people. And this is published by a small press, I presume it's from the UK, I think it's from the UK, Dostoevsky Wannabe. And I'm going to be featuring another novel later in this broadcast, late, later in this video from them. So it's a novel, a novella, 105 pages with the bibliography. Yeah, I'm a little scared, but I will try it. And this is a fairly new release. I just found out about it six weeks ago. In order to copy, I found out about it on the CBC Literary Podcast that I always forget the name of. Oh, it took me forever to find it. I always blank. I love this woman. She is one of my favorite broadcasters anywhere in the world. Maybe because of that, I always blank on her name. She is Canada. She sounds like Canada. That was the name of one of her radio programs. Sheila Rogers and her CBC radio show, which is also... Uh, weekly podcast is called The Next Chapter. And that's how I found out about this, and I promptly ordered a copy because um, if you've been following along in 2021, I've finally gotten into middle grade fiction. So I'm going to read a trans or non-binary middle grade novel published in January of this year in Canada. The Fabulous Zed Watson by Basil Sylvester and Kevin Sylvester. Kevin Sylvester is Basil Sylvester's father. And Basil Sylvester is non-binary, and I don't it feels weird to say that they are Kevin Sylvester's child because they are an adult. So I've got it out there. Kevin Sylvester is the father, and I heard them interviewed, and this just sounds delightful. And it's a, a scavenger hunt starring an endlessly endearing non-binary tween, Zed Watson, uh, to do with a mystery surrounding an unpublished novel. And I believe that, yes, the illustrations that you saw on the cover and in the book are by Basil themselves. So, here I go. I'll put a link to the next chapter, the Canadian literary podcast hosted by the inimitable, the absolutely wonderful, the you can't help fell in love with her, Sheila Rogers, in the show notes. Here is the first of the two gay male novels that I want to tackle in Pride Month, and this is from China, 
Moo cows, in the face of death, we are equal. Translated from the Chinese by Scott E. Myers. And this is one of those gorgeous seagull press books. By the way, I couldn't find any help for how to pronounce Moo Cow's name. Please help me by leaving a comment if I don't have it right. And this is newly translated. I think it was published... Oh, not that new. 2019. New to me, it is a novel about working-class Chinese men. Now, it does have elements of magical realism in the grotesque, which is always a bit of a challenge, but I tend to have less challenge with that when it's in a completely different culture to when it's in a non-Western culture. So, fingers crossed. It's chunky. It's 350 pages. Looks pretty darned interesting. The other gay male novel that I am planning to read is The Prettiest Star by Carter Sickles, published in 2020. I've heard really great things about this. This came under my radar thanks to Kendra Winchester, and more recently, Greg of Supposedly Fun read it and loved it. Carter Sickles is a queer trans male writer, and this story is about a gay man who comes home in 1986 from New York to his hometown in Appalachia. And, oh my goodness, this sounds amazing. I bought it, I think, like a, a week after it was published, and it's been languishing on my shelf, beckoning to me. I'm finally going to get to it for Pride Month. It's won all kinds of awards, and Carter Sickles is a fascinating individual. And just for the record, Carter Sickles uses the pronouns he, him. And there was quite a bit of response when I featured this book previously, so I then bought it. I think I've now had it in a book haul in another video, and this is a lesbian novel from America that was published some time ago. 1962. Cassandra at the Wedding by Dorothy Baker. And I remember the premise vividly. It's about a lesbian going home to her hometown. She's a grad student at Berkeley, and she's going back to her family ranch in the foothills of the Sierra, and if I knew anything about geography, I might have an idea of where in the States that is, but I'll tell you later, and you probably already know for her twin sister's wedding. And my second lesbian novel, I'm so excited I'm finally going to be getting to this one, is Cantoris by, I have listened to the author herself pronounce her name, and I believe the best I can emulate it is Carolina Drobri... Hi everyone, my name is Carolina Drobertis, and I'm... Carolina Drobertis Cantoris. Written in English, this is a novel set in Uruguay, in 1977, about a group of five very different women in the midst of dictatorship who find each other as lovers, friends, and ultimately family. A breathtaking portrait of queer love. It was published a couple years ago, and it's been sitting on my shelf beckoning to me ever since. The author lives in Oakland now with her wife and two children. I can't wait to finally get to this. I think I might have said at the beginning of this video that I had two buddy reads, but in fact I have three. One of them I haven't confirmed with, or I haven't heard back from my potential buddy reader since we first made this plan many months ago, so that might not happen, but let me start with the two that are definitely on. This is the other Dostoevsky wannabe novella that I will be reading for Pride Month, Pete's Underpants by Bertie Marshall. And this will be a buddy read, a buddy read or, and or we're going to do a Zoom chat with Dan of the Weird Book Book Club, who hasn't put up a video for so long that I can't remember what his underwear looks like. I have no idea what to expect about this. But it's called Pete's Underpants, and it's by a gay writer who was born in London in 1960. He has also a memoir, Berlin Bromley, about his life in pre-punk London. Several other books with very naughty titles. Ollie Bliss and I will start a buddy read that's going to go for months and months, but we're starting it during Pride Month. Because it's such a long anthology of gay male fiction, I like to do these one story a week, but no, I mean, we're going to do two stories a week, and that is Speak My Language and Other Stories, edited by Torsten Holger. Chunky, it looks really interesting. It's not that new. 2015. I was disappointed that there was almost everybody in here is white, but there are some interesting sounding writers as well as some writing writers that I really like, and so with that criticism out there at the beginning, I'm looking forward to diving in with Ollie. And do you remember Jer, his channel, 
he did put up a video in January, which I didn't see until today. And he's also one of my subscribers, and he suggested we do a buddy read, anybody read, and so this is what we've agreed to, to read. His channel is or was Jer Sings Reads and Games, and uh, this is kind of a gay and lesbian novel, Marriage of a Thousand Lies by S.J. Sindhu. And it is about a marriage of convenience between a Sri Lankan American couple. The woman is a lesbian and the man is a gay man and they have decided to get married to give their conservative Sri Lankan American parents the illusion they need. I'm looking forward to trying it. I don't know anything about the author, S.J. Sindhu. She was born in Sri Lanka and raised in Massachusetts. Why is Sri Lanka easy to pronounce and Massachusetts difficult? Oh my goodness. Um, if I don't end up buddy reading it with JR, I may still read it, but maybe not, because I do have quite a, quite a bit of other stuff on my plate for June. And this one, I'd kind of forgotten. It's a new release. I hadn't really considered it for Pride Month, but I had decided I was going to read it next month, and then I realized, oh, the author's gay, and one of the main characters is gay. It's a family novel set in Germany and America. The Recent East by Thomas Grattan. I watched a kind of Zoom book lunch for this book and was quite drawn to him, and it was a conversation between him and Michael Cunningham, who had been his writing teacher, who was full of nice things to say, whether he meant them or not. He seemed genuine about the novel, and I've heard good things about it, but I've also heard that it's a very much of a Marmite book. Some people didn't like it at all. I think that because it was too literary, so... Sometimes it's, it's rare for me to think something's too literary, but it does happen. I shall give it a try. It's set around the time of the fall of the Berlin Wall, maybe to the present, and the son of the family is gay. So, coincidentally, I'll be reading this in June, so I might as well put it on my Pride TBR, don't you think? And while we're talking about exceptions and add-ons and whatnot, I always forget... So, in fact, this is a, an addendum to the originally recorded video that... I can add audiobooks to my TBR, and it doesn't take away from my available reading time for other books on my TBR, because when I'm listening to audiobooks, it's usually in a situation, walking or taking public transit or whatever, where I w wouldn't be able to read a physical book. So, I'm going to add one audiobook to the mix, and that is the newest novel by Adam Mars Jones called Box Hill, and it's available to me through Apple Books as an audiobook fairly affordably, so I'm going to do it that way after I saw a lovely review of it by Jen the Librarian. I'll put a link to her review in the show notes. I already had Box Hill on my radar, but when I heard her very positive review, then I checked an Apple Books headed on audio. I thought, oh, I'm going to do it during Pride Month. So Box Hill is about some gay motorcycle dudes. Is that right? I just published last year, I believe tragic love story between two men set in the gay biker community in the late 1970s. Oh my goodness. I am a big fan of Adam Mars Jones's series of novels about a fabulously gay disabled man in the UK starting his life story starts I think in the 1950s and carries on to present day. Pilk Row is the first one which I loved. The second one in the series, it's called the John Cromer series. That's the protagonist, John Cromer. The second in the John Cromer series is Sedilla, and I didn't love it, but I liked it. And apparently, at some point, there will be a third. In the meantime, while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to do Box Hill, his latest offering on audio. Anyway, what I have on my short list for Pride Month, I couldn't be more excited about. Looking forward to seeing your TBR videos. Thanks for watching.